Hello. Uh, in this presentation, we will uh, discuss about the dermatoscopic criteria of lesions located on specific anatomic sites, in particular acral, so plantar and palmar uh, areas, nails, and uh, a few other additional specific sites. Starting with acral, of course, here we need to acknowledge our colleagues from Japan to whom we owe most of the knowledge we have today, including the basic uh, knowledge which is based on the peculiar anatomy of acral skin that consists of alternating furrows and ridges um, and uh, of course the furrows as you can see in the slide are thinner than the ridges and also uh, on the ridges we can see the openings of the eccrine ducts so this is very important for the uh, morphology of pigmented especially uh, lesions because pigmented lesions have the tendency to follow this, uh, uh, this orientation of the furrows or the ridges and the basic rule that, I, uh, uh, that we need to know is that when the pigmentation has the tendency to, uh, to follow the furrows, so to be located on the furrows and then obviously uh, pigmented lines become parallel one to each other because the furrows are parallel one to each other. Uh, so when the pigmentation is on the furrows then this is a good sign. This usually corresponds to a nevus. Um, in contrast, when the pigmentation is located on the ridges, again parallel lines, but this time they are much thicker because they are located on the ridge. Uh, so this is the parallel ridge pattern and this is uh, associated with uh, melanoma. So if we see two real uh, dermatoscopic images, parallel furrow pattern on your left hand side, look that the pigmented lines are much thinner than the non-pigmented ones. And on the right hand side, parallel ridge pattern, uh, the pigmented lines are much thicker than the non-pigmented ones. And also on the pigmented lines on the right hand side, uh, you can see the eccrine duct openings. In contrast, in the left image, you can again see the uh, eccrine duct openings and you can realize that they are uh, located on the non-pigmented line. So parallel furrow pattern on the left, parallel ridge pattern on the right. This is very important uh, uh, and basic knowledge. Uh, and uh, let's see a few more things concerning the parallel furrow pattern. So this is another Typical example, eh? parallel brown lines, which are much thinner than the non-pigmented bands in between. And also we can see the eccrine duct openings, which are located where? On the ridge, which is not pigmented. So we are sure that the pigmentation is on the furrows, parallel furrow pattern. Now. In the, in the next example, uh, we can see that in the central part of the lesion there is a lot of pigmentation and practically everything is pigmented, both the furrows and the ridges, so we cannot decide. But if we focus our attention at the periphery of the lesion, we will realize that the pigmentation is, uh, has the tendency to follow the furrows and not uh, the ridges. So periphery often helps, especially in, in very um, uh, in, in very uh, intensely pigmented lesions. Then, in the next one, we can see again uh, a pattern of parallel lines. Let's try to, fo to, uh, to follow these lines. So first, in the upper part, you can see that the lines are located on the furrows. The pigmentation is located on the furrows and the ridges are free of pigment. I can also see the eccrine duct openings. But now, if we follow uh, the central part of the lesion, we can see that uh, on each furrow uh, there is not only one line, but two lines. So two parallel, very close one to the other um, pigmented lines. Uh, located on the furrows, the ridge remains free of pigment, but on the furrow we see double lines. And this is the so-called double line pattern, which is a variation of the parallel furrow pattern. In the next example, again, let's try to follow the parallel lines. They are located on the furrows. They are much thinner 
than the non-pigmented ones, so it must be a parallel furrow pattern. Look here at the peripheral part, it's even more clear that the pigmentation is located on the furrows. But in this image there is something additional, uh, which is the presence of these pigmented dots on the ridge. Of course, this is not a continuous pigmentation on the ridge, they are simply pigmented dots, and in fact, they are precisely located on the openings of the eccrine ducts. So the, the openings of the eccrine ducts are not white, as they should be, but they are pigmented. So this variation of the parallel furrow pattern is uh, the so-called peas in a pod. This is a metaphoric uh, term uh, used to describe this pattern, and this uh, is associated with congenital acral nevi. One more example here with a higher magnification. Uh, the, uh, the pattern is parallel furrow. Look at the pigmented lines. They are located on the furrows. And on the ridge, we can see these brown dots located precisely on the openings of the eccrine ducts. So, peas in a pod is the uh, third variation of the parallel furrow pattern. And in the next one, uh, uh, image, we can see again a parallel furrow pattern. Look at the pigmented lines. They are located on the furrows. Okay, so it's a furrow pattern. It's not a rich pattern. But in addition, especially in the central part, uh, there are these perpendicular vertical lines uh, crossing the ridge. Uh, of course, again, it's not a diffuse pigmentation of the ridge. Uh, we can see only these uh, vertical lines crossing the ridge. So, uh, in this example here, we have parallel furrow lines following the direction of the furrows, and also vertical lines crossing vertically uh, the ridge and the furrow. So, we have a, a kind of network uh, but in this um, uh, scenario, in this location, we don't call it network, we call it lattice-like pattern, which in fact is another variation, the last variation of the parallel furrow pattern. So, this is, uh, this is the parallel furrow pattern with its variations. And this one is an additional dermatoscopic pattern on acral uh, sites, uh, again associated with nevi, it's, all, it's usually a benign pattern. Uh, here, as you can see, there are again parallel brown lines, but this time they don't follow uh, the direction of the furrows and the ridges. Uh, they are perpendicular to the, to the furrows and the ridges. And this is the so-called fibrillar pattern. Um, that uh, uh, the reason why we see the fibrillar pattern is practically uh, uh, mechanical pressure. Uh, so we see this pattern on molds located in areas of the soul where there is, there is a lot of uh, physical pressure. So, uh, these are the two main patterns of nevi, parallel furrow with the, variation, the variations and fibrillar. Now, concerning the parallel ridge pattern, uh, I would say that this is usually easy to recognize because the, we, it's not a problem to recognize that the pigmentation is located on the ridge. The brown lines are much thicker than the non-pigmented ones. And also we can see the openings of the eccrine ducts, which are located always on the ridge. Uh, and they help us to locate uh, the ridge uh, from the far. Uh, so, in the next image, we can see again a, a quite similar pattern. It looks rather like a parallel ridge pattern, but of course this is not melanoma. Uh, this is uh, an hemorrhage, uh, and we can say so uh, because, first of all, of the red color, uh, and mainly because of the very sharply demarcated outline, sharply demarcated border of the lesion, and also because of the presence of these satellite hemorrhages, which are not connected to the main body of the hemorrhage, uh, which uh, reveal that, that uh, this is simply uh, blood. Obviously, subcorneal hemorrhage is the most frequent uh, cause of pigmentation of the salts especially and uh, usually blood as I said is easy to recognize first of all because of the color look at this one red color it's blood it's not a problem red color 
its, its blood and also peripheral uh, blood spots. Sometimes, especially when the hemorrhage is not so fresh, uh, uh, the, uh, the color becomes a little bit more brownish and then it might be uh, tricky uh, to be uh, sure that this is blood. Of course, the sharply demarcated border is always helpful and remember that in case of significant doubts, uh, it's quite easy to remove the keratin layer and then the blood will also uh, disappear together with the keratin layer. Now, uh, one more, more thing concerning acral lesions. Of course, uh, the main uh, thing we need to remember is uh, to discriminate between furrows and ridges. But there is also <coughs> an additional thing that we should never forget. Uh, and uh, what we should never forget is the basic rule of morphology of, uh, of, uh, of skin tumors. The basic rule of morphology of skin tumors says that benign tumors are usually symmetric, harmonic, and malignant tumors in the opposite are usually chaotic or asymmetric. We should not forget this also in acral moles. Of course, the question furrows or ridges is very important, but also the question symmetry or asymmetry remains important. For instance, in this lesion here, if you try to answer the question furrows or ridges, it could be that you, the response would be mainly furrows, okay? And this could mislead you uh, to the conclusion that this is a nevus. But if you assess the overall symmetry of this lesion, then uh, you will not uh, miss it because, of course, the lesion is highly asymmetric in terms of colors and in terms of uh, structures. So this is particularly uh, uh, important uh, in, uh, in uh, lesions that, uh, in which we cannot decide if the pigmentation is on the furrows or uh, on the ridges. So, in a case like this, the answer to the question furrows or ridges should be who cares since the lesion is uh, highly asymmetric. Let's see together a few examples. Uh, this is a clear-cut parallel furrow pattern and the next one is again a furrow pattern with double lines. The next one is a furrow pattern with the peas in a pod uh, variation. The next one is uh, a parallel ridge pattern, not a problem, the pigmented lines are very thick. The next one is a fibrillar pattern and the next one is a parallel uh, furrow pattern, maybe with a few lattice-like lines in the center. And the next one is a parallel ridge pattern because the pigmented lines are much thicker than the non-pigmented ones. But Sometimes, as I said, it's not possible to, to answer the question furrows or ridges, like in this lesion here or in the next one. Uh, come on, furrows or ridges? I, I'm not sure. I, I cannot say. Furrows or ridges? I, I'm not sure. I cannot say. So, in this uh, scenario, when you are not sure, uh, there are two uh, different approaches. One says that we should focus on the size if the lesion is large we should consider it suspicious. If the lesion is small, we should consider it maybe not suspicious. But I would say that I prefer uh, not to use size as a criterion and instead to use as a criterion what I mentioned before, the overall symmetry of the lesion. And this is practically what we summarized in this BRAF checklist a few years ago. Uh, the, the, the core idea of the BRAF checklist is precisely the fact that we should take into account the overall symmetry and asymmetry of, um, of uh, structures and colors and, of course, also the presence of classic melanoma criteria. And if you assess these two lesions that we saw earlier via the size criterion, you would conclude that the lesion on the left is suspicious and the lesion, because it's large, and the lesion on the right is not suspicious because it's small. But if you use the symmetry criterion, it's precisely the opposite. The lesion on the left is rather symmetric, the lesion on the right is definitely not symmetric. Okay? And this latter uh, approach would lead you to the correct uh, diagnosis because the lesion on the left is a nevus and the lesion on the right is a very early 
melanoma. So that's the idea behind uh, the BRAF checklist. And of course, when we see clear-cut melanoma criteria, then there is no, uh, no further discussion, obviously, and the question follows or ridges becomes irrelevant, okay? So, in practice, uh, there are a few scenarios for acral moles. First, when we see pigmentation on the ridges, even a little bit, this is definitely suspicious. You don't need the checklist here. Ridge pattern is always suspicious. Then, second scenario, the opposite. Parallel furrow lines, okay, and symmetric lesion. Then, uh, no problem. Or, fibrillar uh, pattern and symmetric lesion, no problem. You don't need the checklist. It's benign, it's a nevus. Then, scenario number three, here it becomes much more uh, uh, interesting. Pharaohs or ridges, I don't know. I cannot say, neither pharaohs uh, nor ridges. And maybe if you follow the peripheral lower part, it looks that the lesion is rather going on the pharaohs. But if you check all the surface of the lesion and you try to answer the question symmetry or not symmetry, then the answer is definitely not symmetry, okay? And this is where you should avoid the trap, okay? And you should remember that the basic rules apply also on acral moles. Or here, fibrillar. Yes, okay, fibrillar, but look at the lesion, it's terrible. There is an, there is an irregular blotch, an irregularly hyperpigmented uh, area uh, in the lesion and I, I cannot ignore it, okay? Uh, so here the checklist makes, uh, makes a lot of sense. One more example, neither furrows nor ridges, but who cares? This is a terribly chaotic lesion with irregular dots and globules here, so it's suspicious anyhow. One more example, I don't know if the pigmentation is on the furrows or the ridges, but I know that this is a very asymmetric lesion. And the worst example, uh, here, if you try to answer the question furrows or ridges, the answer is furrows on the left, okay? So it could be very misleading, but if you try to answer the question symmetry or not symmetry, then it's obviously very suspicious because there are two completely different parts. There is an irregular blotch on the right side. So uh, remember uh, that the basic rules of morphology are also valid on acral uh, moles. So in the lesion we saw earlier, the answer should be who cares if, if the pigmentation is located on the furrows or on the ridges. Then, uh, one, one more thing about uh, acral melanoma. There is also a different version of acral melanoma, which is usually amelanotic and which is unfortunately much more aggressive uh, than the classic uh, acral lentiginous melanoma, which, as we know, grows slowly uh, for years sometimes, and it's almost always pigmented. The other type, uh, which is usually not or hypo-pigmented, uh, uh, is a very fast-growing uh, tumor, and we should be aware of this. So look at these two uh, uh, emphatic examples of the two different phases of acral melanoma. And this second subtype, uh, which you can see on the right hand side here, uh, does not display parallel ridge lines or usually does not display pigmentation at all. We can only see an ulceration and sometimes also hyperkeratosis and therefore we should be very much careful with non-healing ulcers and uh, insisting, for instance, warts that don't heal. Uh, because there is this second subtype of acral amelanotic melanoma, which is highly uh, vascular, easily ulcerated, uh, and usually lacking significant pigmentation. If we see pigmentation, it will be in the form of blotches or globules, but usually it's not predominant. One more example here of this uh, second subtype of acral melanoma, you see how, how rich is the vascularization of the tumor. There are ulcerations and eroded areas. So this is the phase, uh, the second phase of acral melanoma. Now, let's move to pigmented nail bands, which might correspond to several different uh, uh, reasons, among which the most frequent one is definitely blood definitely trauma uh, 
uh, is the most frequent reason of pigmentation of the nail plate. Of course, again here, it's true that, uh, that, we, can, um, that we can recognize blood usually because of the color, because of the sharply demarcated border, because the hemorrhage sometimes does not arise from the proximal nail fold, and this is a very useful clue, and also because of the periphery in which we see either blood spots or these linear hemorrhages, these linear projections of the hemorrhage. So, uh, example, it's not a problem to say that this is blood. Red color, linear aspect at the periphery, so blood. Again here, it's obviously blood. Red color, uh, uh, satellite blood spots, linear hemorrhages, so it's obviously uh, blood. Here, even easier already from the clinical uh, picture because the, the hemorrhage does not arise from, from the proximal uh, nail fold, so uh, it's for sure not a melanoma uh, or a nevus. Uh, and one more example of a linear, uh, of linear hemorrhages uh, which are easy uh, to recognize. So, this is the most frequent cause, hemorrhage. If we exclude hemorrhage, then we have several other causes that we have to decide among. And then the next question, reasonably, is if only one nail is affected or many nails are affected. If we have many nails affected, obviously we have to search for a systemic cause. If we have only one nail affected, we have to focus on the possibility of nevus or melanoma or uh, uh, lentigo of the nail uh, of the nail or reactive pigmentation of the nail plate and here the the best guiding sign to tell them apart is the color of the bandit itself so if the color is brown then the, really brown then this is a strong clue for melanocytic tumors nevi or melanoma if the color is gray then this uh, goes rather to the direction of lentigo or reactive pigmentation. Let's see an example. This is a pigmented nail band, but this is not brown, okay? This is gray. So this is against the possibility of nevus and melanoma. This is for the possibility of, of reactive pigmentation after a trauma or after an infection or a lentigo of the nail plate. So gray on the nails is a good sign. Uh, Finally, if the color is brown, then we have to discriminate between nevus and melanoma, and then we come again in the main, in the basic point of symmetry versus asymmetry. Here, we have to assess the band itself, if it is a symmetric band with the same coloration all over its width, or if it's an asymmetric band consisting of different lines, different in terms of pigmentation and thickness. Uh, that's the important uh, thing. Look here an example, regular band on the left, only one color, irregular band on the right, multiple alternating lines of different intensity of pigmentation and different thickness. One more example, irregular nail band. You see how many different lines uh, there are inside uh, the nail band. An additional point is the so-called micro Hutchinson sign, which is uh, the, de the dermatoscopic detection of pigmentation on the proximal nail fold. Uh, Hutchins Hutchinson sign is the clinically detectable pigmentation on the proximal nail fold. Micro Hutchinson is when you don't see it clinically, but you see it dermatoscopically. Obviously, this is a suspicious clue for for melanoma, with the exception of childhood, in which it might correspond to congenital um, nevi. My last point, uh, or almost last point, is uh, the so-called triangular shape of the nail band. If you look here, the base of the band is much wider as compared to the tip of the band, uh, which is much more narrow. So this gives a triangular shape to the nail band. And when we see a triangular shape, dermatoscopically, of course, it's even easier to see the triangular shape. Uh, and what does it mean? It means that the lesion is growing. It's a sign of growth, okay? It's, I would say, very similar to, uh, to the peripheral rim of globules in lesions of the trunk or streaks in lesions of the trunk. So it, it means that the lesion is growing. 
by itself, it's not enough to assess the lesion as suspicious or not, but it gives us the information that the lesion is growing. And therefore, we have to interpret this information in the context of, um, of the patient, of course, depending on the age, mainly, this is the main thing that will, um, that will guide us to the final decision. Okay, so uh, that was it concerning acral and uh, acral lesions and nail pigmented nail uh, bands. Uh, uh, in other presentations, uh, you will listen about other uh, specific sites. Thank you very, very much.